What is up gamers, Fcast and Chill here. Last episode on our Grandmaster Iron Man series, we finished out the Awakened Leviathan and received our Blood Torva kit. Unfortunately, I still don't have any Torva because I've barely done any necks, but at least we got the Blood Kit, so whenever we get some Torva, we can, you know, at least get the kit on it and make it look nice. Um, now that we've finished some of the hardest solo combat achievements in the game, this episode's going to be doing a lot of cleanup on some of the easier tasks I just never got around to because we want to get the master tier combat achievements. So the reason we want to unlock the master tier of combat achievements as soon as we can is that once we do that, then whenever we get a Tazar task from any of the Slayer Masters, it can give us two either Jad or two Zucks for a single task. I still have to do all of the Inferno combat achievements other than a couple that I got just from doing some kill count. So having two uh, attempts for each task is going to be super helpful and reduce the amount of Turiel skipping that I have to do significantly. So we're going to be cleaning up a lot of stuff and trying to get the master level combat tasks this episode. So the first thing I want to start with is um, a task called All Prey Zebok, which is in TOA. So this was one I never actually got on my TOA grind. And the task is essentially what you need to do is you need to beat Zebok in at least a level 300 invocation raid. And he has to be level four or higher path level. And you have to beat him with all those invocations turned on and without losing a prayer point. So it sounds pretty difficult, but actually if you flick your prayers at the right time, then you can actually, you know, do it without too much trouble. My first attempt here, I was trying to one tick flick a lot and eventually I did end up messing up and dying. It, it's, it's actually a little stressful when you have the blood spawns following you and, you know, you have to make sure you're one tick flicking. Also, you know, it, it's interesting that when he's level four, you can see his projectiles he launches out are much faster than I'm used to because usually I'm doing like a level two Zabok in my um, attempts. But, you know, you can see it, it's actually not too bad once you get the timing down. But I am still messing it up some, and I, I did end up dying here on my first attempt. But luckily, we did come back in, and on the second attempt, it went pretty smoothly, just trying to time, you know, flicking my prayers on and off for each of his attacks, and just making sure I'm running away from the blood spawns. But um, yeah, that wasn't too bad. We got All Praise Zebok, which is actually one of the harder TOA combat achievements, and we got it second try. So not too bad at all. Now that we've gotten Blood Torva and we just did a, one of the harder TOA ones, I'm going to focus on some of the other combat achievements that I wanted to hold off on just because they're huge challenges. Like the first one, of course, is No Prayer Hespori. So you have to kill the Hespori without using any prayer or losing a single prayer point. This is extremely challenging because you have to, you know, not fall asleep at your keyboard and make sure you click your food if your health gets low. Um, yeah, not much to say about that. We also have one here killing Thermi only using specs, which I had never done before just because I don't know why. So um, finally got that knocked out. Um, we also did the Hespori speed task. So this one actually was a little bit annoying. Um, wh what I was doing was I would essentially start up the Hespori fight, kill off the flowers and try to get Hespori down as close to 200 HP as possible. And then I would try to uh, do a, ch a spec with my Chally and if you get a big enough special attack, you can actually send him from above 200 HP to down below 100 with one hit, effectively skipping one of the flower phases. And so I, I essentially just kept resetting until I got this to work. So teleporting to the Narda Ami with my Desert Ami 4, you know, restoring all my stats, then coming back in here and just going for it. It did take me quite a while of resetting, but after about, you know, maybe 20 minutes or so, I actually did get a big Chally spec and you could see I finished here in 31.8 seconds. So love to see it. That is Hespori Combat Achievements Green Logged. Next, I'm actually going to move on to Nex. So I hadn't done any Nex on this account. I had just gone in the, the arena to get the track, the music track for the music cape. And so I had no idea what I was doing with Nex, but I figured that I might as well go in here with my Tebow and just shoot Nex some in a mass game just to try to get some combat achievements. I had no idea how this fight went. I just knew, you know, you click on next, click on the minions. Um, clearly, I'm stupid because I'm trying. I was trying to attack next when the minion was active, but um, you only have to hit her a few times to get credit for the kill. So it it's really pretty easy, even in these masses like this, if you have no idea what the hell you're doing. 
And you can see that the first next kill I got, I popped a ton of combat achievements here. And these are mostly, you know, higher tier ones. So it's basically free points. There was a next combat achievement of getting 25 kills. So I actually stayed here doing masses until I got the 25 kill count. And I ended up with all the other combat achievements at Nex other than perfect Nex, because I just never got a perfect one in that kill count. And I, of course, I still need to do the next trio and duo, which we'll get around to later. But that was a lot of free points as well. I also did a couple of other random ones, like there's one killing Scotizo just by using chins and, um, you know, on the finishing hit and not attacking him directly. So just line up the enemies, throw a chin, and then he dies. Pretty straightforward. I also killed Calfight Queen with only using Verox Flail. Unfortunately, I don't have a Verox Flail. So what I did instead was I just summoned a Thrall and flinched her for about, you know, maybe like 10 minutes. Pain in the ass, but pretty easy combat achievement. I also went and did some of the entry mode Tob combat achievements, which I actually hadn't done before. Um, this was good because I needed to learn Tob anyway, so it, it's, it's always good to just get a little bit more experience in some of the boss fights. And after a couple attempts, I did get the entry mode speed time in a solo, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, that, that was good. And it, it was a good little intro to Tob because I'm going to be camping Tob a lot pretty soon to try to get a scythe and just get better for the co Tob combat achievement. So we have that coming up. So the last thing I'm going to focus on this episode before getting into the God Wars dungeon, which is where I'm going to wrap up my master, is the Hydra tasks. So there was one Hydra task that I did leave from the beginning of the series when I went to Hydra, and that was the Darox task. So this task is a little infamous, it's called No Pressure, and essentially you just have to keep your HP really low the whole fight, and only use Darox set and kill Hydra. So the way I did this is just use my locator orb to get my health down, bring some strawberries to use those to heal up so it won't send me over the threshold, and essentially just hope that Darox set hits really hard. I am lucky that my first full set I got from Barrows was Darox, because you need it for this task. Uh, I guess you could do it with Thralls, but I'm, I'm not going to deal with that pain. So let's go on in and see how it goes. This will be my first attempt. So we're just going to go in here. So with the first attack, if you get the wrong prayer, you might need to tell you out. But fortunately, it was a mage attack. So now I just have to count the attacks here because Hydra changes styles every three attacks between ranged and mage. You have to run um, from away from this poison with precise timing to make sure you don't get hit. But I've killed enough Hydra to know how to do that. And so we're just going to hang out here with our Darox and hope it hits hard. And you can see we got a nice 99 there. That's, that's kind of cool seeing numbers that big. I, I'm not used to using Darox, but um, we're going to drag Hydra over here. Just hit it some more with the Darox. Getting some more really big hits in. Um, but yeah, on, honestly, this task like isn't really that bad. Like if you don't get hit on the first um, you know entry into the room, then it really is just counting to three for a long time and just making sure you're careful. But um, my Darox actually went off here and you can see I got Hydra phased into the black phase before he even had a chance to shoot out his flames. And I hit a 101 there, which is kind of wild. But again, just running through Hydra to dodge the poison there and changing my prayers every attack. And that is no pressure first attempt, which feels pretty good. So now that's also a Hydra green log. So now the last thing we're going to do this episode is we're going to focus on the God Wars dungeon combat achievements and clear those up to get the master. And some of these actually were a bit harder than I was expecting, but a lot of them are fairly straightforward. There were a couple I still had left over from uh, Zilliana, which is killer using only chins. So this is essentially just kiting around the room, throwing chins at her minion until she dies. That was pretty straightforward. And then also killing all her minions before she dies. So then again, just kiting and then killing the minions off and then finishing her. Pretty straightforward. There was another one at Zilliana I still needed, which was killing her with melee only, which required a good amount of food. But again, it's, you know, as long as you have the food, you only need to do one kill count. So it's really not that bad. So just kind of going back and forth until she dies. Then the next boss I wanted to go to was Bandos, and General Grador actually gave me some trouble with some of these combat achievements. The first one that I was going to do is just the Org Freezer, and this is one where you just have to kill him, you know, while he's frozen. You can actually uh, do the finishing blow with Ice Barrage here, and that still counts, which is kind of funny. But um, I was trying to go in with my Shadow and mess around with freezing him and just attacking him with Shadow to see how it goes. 
And actually, one of the first kills I got just going in here, I ended up getting a dupe Bando's Hilt, which is kind of funny. Uh, that was actually my third, so uh, I guess, you know, getting drops when doing combat achievements, never going to complain about it. It is a free bond, I guess. But um, after a little bit, we did get the successful freeze on him and ended up getting the Org Freezer combat achievement. And then this, this last one that we need at Bandos is actually called Defense Matters. So this one was pretty stressful. Uh, what you have to do here is you have to do two Bandos kills in a row without taking any damage from his minions. So the minions do respawn whenever Bandos is alive, and um, you know you can kill the minions, but then when he respawns, they're all going to come back. So my strategy for doing this actually was coming in here with my Fang and actually just meleeing General Gardor with an inventory full of brews and restores. And then the entire time when you're killing him, you're just flicking your three prayers on all three of the minions. And so after he dies the first time, then you just keep doing that flicking until he respawns and then just make sure you attack him and keep flicking. This was pretty hard because you had to make sure that you were, you know, brewing up and using your super restores without missing any flicks against the minions so they can't hit you. But after a few tries, I did end up getting it. Um, much harder combat achievement than I was expecting it to be. But um, yeah, it was pretty fun. Defense matters. So that's Bandos done. Um, there were a few we had at Krill that I still hadn't quite um, wrapped up from before, and some of them were kind of similar. There was also the Krill defense one, like similar to Bandos defense matters, so we did that. And then there was also kill uh, Krill with only Demon Bane spells, and so I just filled my inventory with Anglerfish and kited around casting spells. I messed up some because I'm bad at the game, but eventually did end up getting it. And with the Bane of Demons there, you can see that I have now unlocked the Master Tier rewards of the combat achievements. So that's, let's fucking go. I mean, I'm a, a, a RuneScape Master now, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, you know, this is the road to Grand Master, so we still have a long way to go. But we unlocked some really cool rewards. Now our Thralls are going to last 50% longer. Like I said before, we can get two tasks for Jad or Zuck at once, or two kills for one task. So we're just going to talk to Gommel here, and we get a cool, nice-looking Avernic Hilt, which is always a huge plus. So, yeah, pretty exciting. Lots of good stuff here. Uh, that was, you know, a lot of pretty easy combat achievements that we knocked out, and, you know, now we have the Master. It's going to start getting a little bit harder from here on out. The stuff that I have left is not going to be totally free for the most part, so we're going to have to be trying a little bit harder. Um... But yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to wrap up a couple more easy ones and then we're probably going to jump right into the Inferno and try some of those. So just to um, keep it going for a little bit here, I am going to knock out some of these easy ones in this episode too, just to, uh, so we can focus on the Inferno in the next episode. So what the first thing I did was I went and did the melee fight caves. So essentially just going through the fight caves with melee, you can still heal up. Um, so just bring like food and stuff and you can even barrage I believe as long as you don't equip a, a magic weapon so really pretty straightforward um, not a bad fight at all you do need to be careful not getting meleeed by Jad at the end but um, what you can always do is just use a crystal halberd and stand a tile away and just attack him from here and then it's essentially a normal Jad fight so melee fight caves down nice and easy then there was another Fight Caves combat achievement I wanted to get, which is complete the Fight Caves without losing a single prayer point. This one is actually kind of hard, because the Majors will hit you pretty hard if you don't have Protect from Mage up. And so what I ended up doing is I one tick flicked the entire Fight Caves. I will say it was also challenging because the bats that spawn in the Fight Caves, if they hit you, they will drain your prayer. So essentially what I was doing is I would start each wave trying to prayer flick, uh, one tick flick, you know, my mage prey so that I wouldn't take any hit from the major. And then in between the major's attacks, I was trying to turn my prayer off and make sure I kill any of the bats coming at me. So it, it was a bit stressful with all that going on. And the first time I tried it, I actually did end up failing, as you can see here. But then we got another Jad task and ended up going back in. This was my setup, essentially using Bofa. And then I also had the Tebow and Masori legs because this was before I got my Masori top. Uh, Tebow is great for majors, Bofa for everything else. This this was also pre-blowpipe, so a little bit out of order here. But um, yeah, we went back in and we just one tick flicked our asses off, got a little bit luckier with the bats and didn't have to deal with any of them. 
um, and we were able to kill them before they drained any of our prayer and made it all the way through to Jad. And then again here, just one tick flicking my prayers the entire Jad fight, which, you know, is a little bit easier than you'd think it would be once you get the one tick flicking to timing down. You can see I have that visual metronome flashing up on my screen of different colors that helps out a lot too. But that is uh, no time for a drink, so fight cave's done without any prayer point usage, so it feels pretty fucking good. We still have one more fight caves task that I believe is the um, speed time that I never got because I didn't have a blowpipe forever, but we're going to knock that out soon and then we are going to dive into the inferno and take on those challenges. The inferno is, you know, one of the hardest single player content uh, things in the game and one of the challenges is to do it with melee only as well as like several other really challenging ones. So we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, we're, we're getting closer and closer. Uh, going to try to wrap up all the solo challenges, starting with Inferno, and then leave the raids and the team challenges for last. So we're getting pretty close to GM. We're going to keep making progress, see how it goes, and hopefully get it before too long. But um, yeah, that's it for now. I am going to go and try to knock out more of these tasks. If you ever want to watch me do any of them on Twitch, you can follow my Twitch in the description below and I will be back later uh, with more content. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I will catch you guys later.